after at 7.04. And since we have the full complement of regular members, um, we don't need to appoint any alternates this evening. Okay. Um, and welcome to the two new alternate members, Karen Ola and Pat Ule. Thank you very, very much for volunteering for this <laughs> interesting positions. <laughs> Um, first up, our order of business is a public hearing. So, um, Earl, would you read yep. the legal okay. notice? Uh, the Woodstock Historic District Commission will hold a public hearing on March 24th, 2021 at 7 p.m. for 531 Route 169, the Lyman's, for a new route. All right. Um, so then the rules for this particular for public hearing um, are that um, one person should speak at a time. When you do speak, um, you should identify yourself and give your address if you are a member of the public. Um, those of us who are um, commission members will identify themselves. I'm Gail Usher and I'm the chair. Um, then we will call on the applicant to come to provide a detailed description of their, of their project with plans. We'll ask the applicant questions. Um, if there are any supporting comments from the public, we'll solicit those and ask any questions. If there are any comments in opposition, we'll solicit those and ask questions. And the applicant mm -hmm. can respond at the end of that. Um, if there were any opposition comments, those can then be stated. And at that point, the commission members will make a determination on whether, whether or not to close the public, they're ready to close the public hearing and deliberate. So opening the public hearing and Sam and Bruce, welcome. And would you present your project to us? <clears throat> You're right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, thank you, Gail. Um, I'm Alexandra Lyman, called Sam for short. Um, this is my husband, Bruce. Um, we lived at 531 Route 169 for 43 years, coming this May. And we have put on um, two cedar roofs to date, each of which lasted 21 years. We cannot afford to use cedar in this third application. It, the material has just become so expensive. And with the cost of labor involved in applying it, um, we've decided to return to an asphalt shingle um, in an architectural so-called form. Um, we would like to use the product that our contractor, Scott Perry, has recommended which is an Owens Corning product um, in the color Estate Gray, which is a um, rather subtle variegation, which we prefer to the um, much more pronounced color changes in some new shingle. And it also has a slight green cast that works well with the four copper roofs that we have in various parts of the house. Um, I think the only other thing to say is that when we first bought the house in 1978, it was covered with black asphalt shingle, which started flying off in the first high wind. So one of the first jobs we had to do was put a roof on. Um, and we love the look of cedar, but we don't think anything in the market um, obtains that look, and we don't like materials that purport to be other than they actually are. So we're not looking for a cedar imitation. Do you have um, examples? Uh, you, I think <laughs> you said to me you had an example of the, sh of the shingle. Yes, Bruce will take you into the kitchen to see that. It's on the floor, if that's okay, okay with you. That's fine. And, and what you would need to do is, um, let's see. Sorry, you over here. I let's see. While you're doing that, then I will um, hunt up the. I will find the photographs that you sent me of installed of that roof and pull them up, and then afterwards share those. Thank you. 
Thank you, Gail. <clears throat> Excuse me, Gail. One other comment that I would like to make, I'm Bruce, the applicant with, with Sam, um, is that it is almost impossible, not quite, but almost impossible to insure this house, homeowner's insurance, with a wood roof. It's an older home, um, it's a substantial home, and it has a wood roof, and there's a significant fire hazard We've been able to insure the house over the past few years with one provider. Um, our independent insurance agent has every year looked to find another person uh, for competitive bidding to see if we could find another insurance agent. And, and she's been it's been impossible to find someone else to insure this house. So I think an asphalt roof, um, again, from another cost perspective, would enable us to continue to insure the house and actually would give us perhaps a little bit of a break on the premium. I'll walk the computer um, and show you the just a couple of pieces of this. You guys shingle. able to see the images? Oh, well, you're going to be yeah. able to see it. Yes, Pat. But that's about as best I can do. Okay, pull it back a little bit, Bruce. That's good. Uh, that, yeah, that one looks quite a bit darker than the pictures. Right. Of the roof. It's also inside under artificial light, so. Okay. It could be a difference. Yeah. Okay, and now if you um, move the your a tablet or computer, your camera closer, if you would. Hey, well, all I can see is the picture of one of the houses. Yeah, that's, that's on. Pat has pulled up for us the picture of the house. Um, let's see. Of, of, a, of a house with the shingles that they like to install installed on the house. Let's see, Lyman's, where are, did you go? There we are. Um, Pat, could you take that, unshare your screen so we can go to full screen with the Lyman's, please? Yep. All right, full screen. All right, and that gives us a little bit better mm. of the shingles. Is that the black one or the gray one? No, this is the estate gray. And you said, Bruce and, and Sam, that the black one was a shade or so darker, correct? Yes, that's correct. It's, um, it's quite a bit darker than that. Right. We can give you a chance to get back. We can show, we can show you that in just a second. She'll, She'll pull out a sample of that. Okay. Do we have any uh, jurisdiction over color on this? Because the color is integral to the shingles, then, um, then yes, we we do. What was the color of the shingles before the cedar was put on? You said they were black. They were black shingles when we first bought the house. This is a small sample of the black color called could onyx you, black is that could if that's a towel flat draped over the top could you flip that back yeah. And, yeah the towel just covers the part of the shingle sheet that does not oh okay is not exposed okay. so yep. there's the black on the bottom and the uh, estate gray. gray on the top Okay, good. Okay. Right. Now, whose whose house was that that I was showing the picture of? <laughs> uh, um, somebody who's had their someone who for whom, with whom their contractor put on the the okay, same. But thing. it's the same shade. That's what I'm getting at. Yes. Yes. It's the estate. According to yes, that's the estate gray. Because it looks a lot lighter on that house and it does laying on the kitchen floor <clears throat> yes that's a light 
As I said to Gail today, it is the same shingle as was applied to the East Woodstock post office. That's another way to see it and with a fairly steep pitch. Our, the main house um, where we live has a rather low pitch. So the shingle is less visible on that four square in the front. Are you making any um, changes to the to the roof? Um, is it going to have a oh a ventilation ridge, or um, it will not have? I don't think it will have a, a ridge vent. It won't. I don't think it will have a ridge cap. No. All right. Um, will it have a cap, but not a vent? But not a, not vent. a vent. It won't be raised up slightly. No. It, Correct. It will have plywood applied, however, because the old chestnut boards are fairly popped. You know, they've had so much, um, so much nail put through them in 200 years. Yeah, but that won't be visible. That's underneath the shingles. Right. That's correct. Um, I would like to also say, uh, Bruce here again, that the current appearance of the weathered cedar shingles that we have is I don't know Sam what would you say it's a it's a grayish color uh, once lighter. much lighter uh, once the cedar has uh, has weathered down. So they're lighter colored. They've they've the I would I drove by there today the um, cedar shingles have weathered out to a really light silvery gray. Okay which is what they do. Yeah. All right, commission members, questions for the Lymans? No. Me. no. Yeah, I, I, drove, I drove by the house today and the shingles look fantastic. I'm surprised they're failing. <laughs> if Gail shows you the picture of the roof, Tim, you'll see the many splits. And during those very heavy rains that we had, at the beginning of um, our, I think it was even the winter um, in January, we actually had water on the underside of the roof boards. Oh, wow. Okay. See if I can show, I can't share my screen because I didn't download it, but let's see if I can get it in my camera to. You had leaking from not just the heavy rainstorms, but from ice dams on the roof during the winter? We, we certainly have had ice dams in the winter. I get out my roof rake and try to get some of the uh, deep snow off the edges of the roof. But yes, we have had interior leaking uh, from ice dams. Yes. We also have one valley uh, between the main house and the L of the house on the north side of the house. Uh, that I'm sorry, the south side of the house. Uh, where during heavy rainstorms, especially with a driving wind, we will have dripping coming down in our dining room bay. So the roof has failed in that area as well. So I'm looking at the photographs that's, that they sent um, and it shows a close up of one section shows them severely thinned. You know, there in some cases they have been scoured, surface has been scoured down. The edges are all flayed away, and there's a lot of cracking uh, and splits all throughout um, the two photographs that um, they were kind enough to send. No. Well, if it's leaking, that's the problem. Anyway. Yeah. And the roof, and you said this current roof has been on for what you said, 20 years? <laughs> 21 to be exact. Do. Additional questions for the Lyman? Uh, your preference is the estate gray rather than the black? Um, you know, we, Earl, we started out thinking that black was the thing to do because it seemed to have the least variegation. Okay. But as we looked at more roofs around the few towns that we were able to to um, view, we really preferred the estate gray. It's okay. still a subtle change in color. And um, when we looked 
carefully at the East Woodstock Post Office, we both said this this looks right. Mm -hmm. sure. um, what about drip edge and other parts of the roof? The contractor um, usually applies a one inch drip edge, but I think we're going to argue him out of that because I don't really want to see it on the freeze board um, at the top of the um, decorative element around the main house. Additional, additional questions, members? And the flashing? Will that change around the, the way, chimney? Chimneys? No, the chimney flashing will be retained. It's in good shape and it'll be just as it is now. It's lead. Okay. Um, if there's no additional questions, <laughs> then um, oh, there are any supporting comments from the public. Um, we'll accept those now. Hearing none, uh, comments in opposition. Hearing none, um, you can, it, the, Sam and Bruce, anything further that you'd like to add? Uh, I might just um, say, Tim, um, I didn't want to put another roof on this house. <laughs> I can tell you that right away. I thought we would be retired into a home somewhere uh, before <laughs> putting another roof on, but we have to. Uh, the roof is not functioning the way a roof should. This is a wonderful old historic property and uh, we need to protect it. So we will. Well, you've had a great run all these years. <laughs> yeah. And it's a, it is a beautiful house. No question. <clears throat> if you had to pick the two of redoing a roof or being in a home, I think the roof is the way to go. <laughs> at least for another few years yeah thank you <laughs> um let's see any further questions or comments commission members otherwise we can um if we're if you're ready for to um deliberate we can close the public hearing so move we we'll close the public hearing all right that's harold is there a second i'll second earl all, right. all in favor signify by raising your hand Opposed, abstain. All right, good. Um, then, so at this point, Sam and Bruce, we're just going to talk amongst ourselves for a couple of minutes and um, come up with, see what we come up with. All right. Uh, well, I, I, I prefer the gray myself after looking at the two shades and, and the fact that their current uh, shingles are gray will kind of keep it the same. My yeah, I think they've done a good job in picking the color they did. Just one comment on the drip and rake edges. If they're going to add a layer of plywood, that's about the only way you can cover the edge of that plywood that I know of. So, because that sticks up higher than the existing roof boards. Mm -hmm. So it might be a hard sell to try to get rid of that those aluminum edges. The house is white, and once they're up there, I think they'll be pretty unobtrusive. Mm -hmm. Jim? Yeah, I just like to point out we did uh, approve another structure with a wood roof to be converted to asphalt shingles. Right three years ago, I think it was the Asa Bishop Tavern. So there is precedent. And if anyone can protect a historic structure, it's the Lyman's and I trust them implicitly, you know, with what they're doing. I, I agree. And, and the bottom line is to protect the house. 
um, and also make it possible for the homeowners to 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 be able to do that. You know, it's it's um, it's if I, in an ideal world, cedar good quality cedar is still available at a, an affordable price. But it's having what four five years ago done Roseland Cottages roof. I absolutely know you can't get it at all. <laughs> is Roseland Cottages roof a fireproof shingle? Yes. Right. So, um, yeah. So anyway, all right. If then, um, are we in agreement that the we can approve the estate gray architectural shingle as proposed with the flashing to rem remain and um, of and that are are we um, also fine with if necessary, the application, the installation of the drip edge as well. Sounds good to me. Yes. Looking for a motion. So move, Earl. I'll second. Yep. Is there a discussion, further discussion? If not, all in yep. favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining, motion carried. All right. Your Thank you for being, Mr. and Mrs. Lyman, for being just such great stewards of that wonderful house on the hill for 40, did you say three years? Three years, I heard. On May 17th is our anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> thank Happy, you all yeah, very much. Thank you, guys. Um, I will be, let's see, I will fill out the form um, and approve with approval, try and if I'm able to try and get it to the town hall, the town hall's piece of it tomorrow. If not, it may be the beginning of the week and yours I'll drop in the next few days, I'll drop on your, probably on your side porch in an envelope. So good luck with the project. Thank you. Next order of business, review of the minutes of February 24th, our last meeting. Did everybody get a chance to review the minutes Earl sent out? Yes. And if we're all set, we'll take a motion to approve the minutes. I'll so move. I'll second. second. That's Dan and Tim? Yes. Yeah, right. Um, is there any discussion, any... Um, uh, corrections. Look good to me. Hearing none, um, then all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Motion carried. All right. Um, correspondence. Uh, so, Earl, I um, corresponded quite a bit with the Lymans regarding yeah. their their um, their project. Um, also corresponded. Um, with the Youngs regarding their um, proposed project, the two circuit with the circuit rider, yeah. um, we if if we're if the if um, one somebody one of the Youngs is able to, it looks like the circuit rider will be up on the thirty first of March. Yeah. That's next Wednesday. Yeah. At some point, whatever's convenient for um, for the Youngs um, to take a look at the property and we'll go through it with Stan. And then, and um, we can have, if as long as we have two, there are two people, two of us maximum, then it's not considered a public meeting. So if and somebody else is available and would like to be in attendance, I'm going to meet the circuit rider, but then I'll leave and let, if there's somebody else who wants to actually go Look, be in the house to take a look with Stan, then let me know and you, know, you can join in as well. That would be good. Uh, I had a conversation with the building official um, and also um, correspondence with uh, the new owners of 528 Route 169. Let's see. 530, 538? 28. 528. Yep. Hi, we're here. 
Ah, uh, can you hear us? Oh, yes, we can. Welcome. Welcome, to, welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you. I'm Christy. This is Chase. <laughs> Very good to meet you. You too. So right. this is our first meeting. I don't know. Do you want us to kind of explain what we're looking to do or do you do that? <laughs> that will come up in just a minute. We're in public comments next. And that's just okay. a kind of an open if somebody has comments. And then the next piece after that will be the project consultation piece. And that's when any people such as yourselves who are are thinking about a project and, and would like some guidance and kind of introduce it. That's when you, that's when it's your your chance to 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 discuss it. Um, okay, thank you. So we'll, I'll I'll be up to we'll be on that in just a moment. Is there any in general public comment at this time? Hearing none, we'll move on to project consultations. And so with the Lassards. How do yes. you spell your last name? How do you spell your last name, please? L E S S A R D. Okay, great, thanks. And I guess I'll preface it by saying that I was contacted, they contacted me to say that they had some um, repairs in mind and wondered, introduced themselves and then wondered how to go about um, as new residents of the district, what the procedures were and, and to go about um, get starting those. And so I you know, suggested they, they could attend this and the project consultation is a good way to start it. So with that, um, you can go ahead. Where so, is this location? It's there. At, um, you, remember it, you have the house where the boat used to be, right? Right. Yes. The boat's yeah. gone. <laughs> where, where the big boat used to be. Oh, yeah. That's correct. That says Woodstock Hill. Yes. <laughs> yep. Um, so as you've probably known, we've had these big bushes in the front of the house for like the last 40 years. So I don't know if anyone's even seen the front of the house in that long. <laughs> but behind that was the porch, um, which runs around the front and then to the side where the front door is, um, which was covered by the bushes as well. And it's been so long that the bushes started to uh, eat away at the skirt of the porch, as well as at the railings. So we've actually removed all of the railings and are stripping them and gonna redo them to their um, natural white that they were. But um, while doing that, we also found that there was a set of stairs there that obviously we're not positive, but they don't look original to the house. They're only about three feet wide. Um, there's no design to them to match the railings that are there or any of the kind of Victorian design that's there at all. Um, so we, want to replace those stairs with kind of a larger design because we've also noticed in the front of the house um there are four posts they're about nine and a half feet apart kind of set uh set up symmetrical on the front and there seemed to be kind of like a random post that did not match any of the work and it was used kind of at the top of the stairs to hold the railing so what we actually are proposing is to set up stairs between um, the post that's all the way to the right and then the next one to the left. So it'd be a staircase about kind of nine feet wide. And then we would also wanna redo the um, skirt of the porch. Right now, it's kind of like an old lattice. It doesn't even really look like something you'd buy at the store. It's more of something that was kind of put together like by somebody, but it's all rotted away. All the nails that are in there have kind of rusted out, so it's falling apart. Um, we sent in an image uh, I can share it as well, kind of with an idea of what we'd like to do. Okay. Uh, sharing it right now. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that would run around um, the right corner here across the front. It would then meet the stairs and then come around the left side as well. Um, and we would probably paint that white as it is. I know the color doesn't really matter much, but um, it would go like that. It would meet the stairs. And then because the stairs, they also had like a um, iron railing, which again, didn't really match. We're thinking of doing something similar to this idea here where we would actually repurpose one of the railings. Um, can you see this 
staircase or is it still showing the skirt? We can see we, we can see the here. salmon at the one that's on the, the house it's numbered 805 yep okay so what we plan to do is kind of have the staircase there using the two existing posts um we're going to fix those they've brought it away a little bit at the bottom too and then actually um reuse one of the old railings that take one of the spindles out and kind of remake them to have railings run down the side so they'll match what's actually there and I'm not sure if the historic society has an older image of the house, maybe without the bushes. I think it would have to be like pre-1995 in order to have that. But um, as of now, we don't really have anything to show kind of what the house looked like at that time. What is this picture of this 805? That's not the property, right? No, that's not the property. That is, that's just a, a Showing sample. Upstairs. OK, gotcha. Exactly. So, so you you're thinking of um, instead of the whatever some a wrought iron railing is it a is the wrought iron railing on both sides of the existing stairway or just one side? It it was down both. We actually removed it because all of the screws had rusted away and it was mm -hmm. kind of a safety hazard. So yep. we, we did take it off, um, but it, it was kind of dangerous at the time. Okay, so I'm gonna replace the rust the the wrought iron railing on both sides, you're thinking about replacing it with. Um, so is this is this the, um, let's see, um, with wooden railings, is this the, the design, not necessarily the color, but the design you'd like on the, on the posts at the front? So um, actually the posts that I had mentioned that didn't entirely um, match the ones that support the roof of the porch, they are short. We have one of them. It's short, like this one shown here on the left or right with a ball on top of it. It doesn't match the post um, that hold the roof entirely, but it is very similar. So what we had thought of is repurposing one of them and then um, building a second one to match that. And they would be at the bottom of the stairs, like shown in the image. And then the railings running between that short post to the post that holds the um, roof, we would have it made with the spindles to match the railings that are already there. Would this all be made of wood? Yes, yeah, it would all be made of wood. Um, we would find someone who turns wood to uh, create those for us. Because we have a few rotted ones, we actually need to replace them anyways. So we're going to find someone to replace those, and then we can have these made. And can you go back to the other photograph? Yep. One second. <clears throat> and so you're thinking that um, instead of the lattice, this is you're going to have you'd have this um design yep. would it would it be wood correct so the top here um my guess on this photo is probably a one by ten we right. may do a one by eight but maybe a one by ten here the size of that would match what i'm not sure if you can see what i'm drawing on the screen yep but it, it would match that here and then there would be smaller pieces here for the wood and that would go all the way around the deck, other than, of course, where the stairs are located. Um, part of the purpose of a, a, the, a lattice on the, let's see, the bottom, the skirt of a porch, um, aside from trying to keep animals from getting under the porch, they are larger ones, at least. Um, yeah. uh, the, lat the lattice was also to give decent ventilation under the porch. So, yep. so in those rectangles that have the vertical slats, is there space between them, or are are they are they tight butted joints? No, there there would be space. It, it wouldn't be a significant amount, but like you said, there would be space to allow ventilation. Which is kind of hard to see on this image, but I I believe it is there. 
Well, this is this is just a sort of looks like that you're showing us as opposed to a final design anyway. So um, yeah, exactly. But, Okay. Um, commission, this isn't a public hearing, this is just a project consultation. So um, I think what the, and what typically happens um, is that you, you, know, you, you present what you're thinking about and then we have, a, um, we have a conversation with you about what we think <laughs> might be, what might be appropriate or what might need to get tweaked to in the design to to make it appropriate um, so course. that your application will be approved so this is the time for um it's an uno, unofficial based aside from the fact that it's recorded and there will be minutes but it's an unofficial opportunity to just to just discuss the project and get input from commission members on on what they think so um this is Earl. I um, particularly like the idea of using wood, <laughs> which we don't always hear these days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's a nice design pending me actually seeing the house and how it fits with that. But um, I like what you're thinking in terms of just the skirt itself, independent of anything else. Thank you. Yeah, and one of the things with our house too is um, we want to keep the historic part, but there was an addition put onto the house, I believe, in the '80s. So we do have a, a garage with a deck on top of it that is, of course, not original to the 1890 building that we have. And there's an addition built onto the back of the house in the '80s as well that kind of changes that. Tim, any thoughts? Yeah, Tim Monahan. I do like the plan as you're presenting and I think it's a sympathetic renovation that would fit the house. I like that it's made of wood. What I would just like to see when you come back for approval is like a drawing showing the stairs with the house in scale, because I don't know, I, I'm in principle, I like those stairs, but is that, going to be fitting the scale of the stairs to the rest of the house. I can't tell. Yeah, we, we can probably come back. will. We can come back with a drawing, definitely. But I'd like to see, yeah, the scale of the stairs to the house. OK. Yeah. Because there are, it's a nine foot wide stairway, so. Yeah, the front deck is about um, nine, 34 feet oh, okay. so the length of the house. And I, I agree with Tim that it's a it seems to be a sympathetic design to the the era of the house. Um, we're really happy that you're going to do this in wood, and that also you're you're utilizing some components of the house that are there um, yeah. to to go ahead as um, just shifting it a little bit. Um, so um, when when you come back. Um, for your application, then what you should what you should do is have um, a front, uh, full on front view photograph of the house, okay. so that just a reminding us what it currently looks like, um, and then a detailed as I'm sure you will be a detailed plan of of the of the project um, and uh, identification of all materials. Okay, we can have that. And demand and, and the dimensions. Yep, that's easy enough. And uh, I think it's a, you know, I, it, we are, uh, I think it'll make a, it'll make a nice impression. It, it's something better than those. Um, bushes? I, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> between the bushes. That was our first, I think the first day we moved in, we took the bushes down, so. Yeah, they, they were eating away at the house. So yeah. A for a gardener's cottage, it looked like there had been much gardening for a while. So yeah. <laughs> like, the vine like a new house, house with those bushes gone. Yeah. <laughs> and between the bushes and the boat, that was all anybody ever saw at the house. <laughs> I know everybody always talks about the boat. We never saw the boat, but everybody brings it up. So <laughs> I used to live three doors down. Everyone kept asking me if that was my boat. So 
<laughs> I'd like to ask you a question, Chase. Yes. This is Stan. I'm wondering if and how you were informed before you bought the house that you lived in a historic district and what the limitations were. So unfortunately, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the previous owner, Ivor Thompson, he passed away. So he left the house and his estate. Um, we weren't actually notified by the owner or the realtor, but um, the neighbor two doors down, um, Marilyn. Marilyn, yeah. Yeah, Marilyn let us know. And then obviously she told us to reach out if we want to make any changes, well, or updates. So the I realtor did not tell you? Sorry, what was that? The realtor did not say anything though. Uh, she, so she did, but she um, didn't make it seem like how it's run. She was just kind of like, oh, if you make changes that look good, nobody's going to care. Like you, she never said that you had to talk to anybody or yeah. anything like that. Hmm. So that's an ongoing problem that we've had. And so I was just curious. Uh, and I mean, and to some extent, it's understandable. The real estate agent doesn't want to throw out any roadblocks. However, it's not fair to the home, the potential buyers not to know what's involved. Right. Um, and I think the situation was a little tough, too, um, with the owner passing. So maybe things weren't passed on that way, too. So Yeah, and whoever owned the house, they were, um, we never even spoke with them or saw them even at closing. I guess they were sick as well. I mean, they left everything in the house for us too. So, you know. Just as a side note, I got to meet Ivor Thompson, you know, for, you know, trick-or-treating, Halloween, taking the kids by. And he was quite a character. We've heard. That guy, he flew <laughs> Spitfires for the Royal Air Force during World War II. So, yeah, we actually have yeah. a lot photos the family didn't take like any photos so I mean I don't know if the historic district is interested in any of those but we have a lot of things that they left here yeah the historic historical society would be yeah absolutely so and I'm I'm on the board of the historical society so I'm just going to make a note and yeah, uh, across the street yeah, yeah. Across, it's across yeah. the street so <laughs> eventually it's it's pretty well closed because of COVID, but eventually um, somebody will contact you and um, and to co and collect whatever it is you'd like to share. Oh and yeah, we have letters, pictures, a lot of things. Yeah, That's great. Um, and it. and um, in we'll look at I'll, I, I'll get somebody looking to see if we've got some earlier photographs of your house. Okay, thank you. Um, just in terms of uh, like showing every is that for next meeting when we would propose everything if that's your schedule um we meet on the fourth um wednesday of each month um okay. so if you are planning to move forward with this then and uh you know in this as the spring opens up um then i would recommend that you get submit an application you, you submit an app the procedure is you you can either I think the application is downloadable from the town from the historic district website. Okay. And just fill it out, um, and you can drop it off at the town hall in an envelope labeled um, "Historic District Commission Building Official." So it's got to go to the building official first, who stamps, date stamps it as a, as um, accepted, and then they get it to me and we schedule the public hearing for it. Okay. So if you, if you can have it, that the application into the building official by about by about the 15th, is that gonna give, wait a minute, check the calendar here. So our meeting in April will be the 28th, right. So if you can have it, to um, the building official by the 15th, that gives me time enough to um, submit a legal notice to the news, to notice it for the newspapers uh, for the public hearing. Okay, that's, yeah, that's plenty of time. We can have that, that's fine. Okay. And uh, so, excellent. Well, like I said, welcome to the district. Um, yeah. And did you get, I, I emailed you um, the 
guidebook handbook of the district. Um, it's a large, it's a large document. Um, so I'm not sure you, whether it, I've had trouble mail, emailing it. So yeah, um, we, we received it and it, it's actually funny. We found that in the house, I think the original version too. So yeah, that's what we've been going off of. So <laughs> all right. Good. I like just that gives you a little bit of information. Then. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Commission members, any other comments for the Lassards? Well, I just want to thank them for going through the process. Really appreciate it. It we makes do. our life a lot easier. Of course. Absolutely, I agree. And our goal is really our our charge is to protect the the integrity of of the district. Um, but part and parcel with that is also to work hand in hand with the homeowners in the district so that um, their your houses, you can keep your houses up and in good repair. And if you have to make changes like the Lyman's had to do that, you know, they needed to do a roof, but um, accommodations needed to be made. We try not to be draconian um, where we don't have to be. And, yeah. and doing the kinds of things you've just done, which is coming for the for the project consultation, is a real good way to make sure that we work. We the our, the two units, you the homeowner and the dip commission, work together to um, keep your house and yeah. do what you need to get done. Yeah, it's all about protecting and preserving the houses, definitely. And also making it good, making the house work for you. Yeah, of course. So we appreciate it very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, are there any other project consultations? All right, um, and let me just get out of this so I can read my actual agenda here. All right, old businesses, um, 599 or 169. I have I spoke to the building official um, without being specific, but he um, whenever we he has assured me that whenever there is a problem, he welcomes the opportunity to sit down with us and fill him in on the background. And if he needs to take action, he is willing to take action. Good. Um, and he also provided, and let me see if I still have it. And I explained that, that um, one of the things that we were lacking was information on just exactly, all right, here we go, just exactly what, so every once in a while, what required a permit and what didn't, and, and we didn't want to be giving homeowners information that was erroneous. Um, and so he said that the best thing for us to do, and I'll email these, this information to all of you, but he gave me a, a, what they call an IRC, and, and it's, um, it's, it's a, and all I have written out is int resg code. Hmm. Anyway, it's a two, 2018 version of it. In particular, there's a particular section on permits and one on emergency activities. And he said that's what he goes by for determining whether any kind of project needs a building permit. Okay. And so um, I will, or, or I'll send the specific designation to, to everybody. And he says it's easily searchable online. So that's a, that's a, a reference that we can use. Sounds good. Um, and I've sent another email to 599 reminding them of what they agreed to. Um, if you have driven by, you may have noticed that they now have that big, looks like a deuce and a half, what they used to call it an army truck yeah. that they had said was not going to be on the property is now parked on the east side at the east barn doors. Um, and uh, then and they've got the um, a lot of giant wooden sunflowers all along the barn, as well as at least one, if not two big um, um, old gasoline station signs on the barn. So I reminded them that those were not approved. And in fact, they had agreed that they would not do anything like that. Um, in addition, they've got a big trailer. Uh, it's like, 
it's the size of a big horse box, I would say, not a mega horse box, but a good sized horse box. Obviously that's what they fill up there. You know, they take with them to wherever they go to get their merchandise, but it's I think not- I go down to Pennsylvania once a week um, to get all the Amish built stuff. Yep, it's now parked there. Um, and also the, um, there's a little, it looks like a, some kind of a golf cart or a farm hmm, or a if ranch runabout vehicle. Like a gator, what, what you would call a gator, a little four by four. Four by four park there. I mean, we don't really have any jurisdiction specifically over vehicles, but it's just, it adds to the cluttery look of, of the place. Um, so I will, I will, we'll keep pressing away. When's the um, last communication they've had with them? They have not communicated now for over a month. They didn't respond to my previous email and so far they haven't responded to this one. So my next step is I'm going to get stationary, town stationary. Um, I'll pick, pick that up at the beginning of the week and we'll write an official, um, a non-official letterhead letter and have send it registered to them. So the building official and I both agreed that we really don't want to, you know, we'd prefer not to get, to take it up, ratchet it up too high and we'd hope to be able to just work things out and give it time to, give it some time, give them some time to figure out what's going on. So I am, we remain optimistic. Well, with spring being Good question, here, Gail. Sorry, go ahead, Stan. I would think they would, should, or would be starting on the plantings and everything too, to, yeah. that they're supposed to be screening the ramp with and all that kind of thing. And um, according to the approval, they were to submit a plan and a landscaping plan to us. So we can, I can, I can uh, follow up and, and ask for that landscaping plan. I reminded them that they um, are still outstanding on a, an application for the two gates as well as the porch. The um, circuit rider, when the circuit rider comes, I'm gonna ask him if he will go and just take a look at everything. And so that he can also advise us. And then once the circuit rider has been here and taken a look at the house, the Young's house, um, and then um, that's when we will hold a special meeting where um, with the circuit riders and potentially one other person from the State Historic Preservation Organization that will be a commission, it'll be just for us and an information meeting so that we can kind of work out the detail, really the nitty gritty of um, making sure that we do our due diligence and we can we best advise the youngs on going forward on their project so, and we can get the best possible outcome. Yeah, I had a quick question. In uh, situations similar to this, you, um, you've tried to have, uh, you know, email or phone call conversations with them. Um, is there ever a uh, stop and knock, meet and greet? Um, we, we, in the, if it weren't COVID, it would be a stop in and have a conversation. It's, it's the, the, what makes this much more complicated is that it, we, we're, in, you know, we're still dealing with COVID. Um, we did, at the beginnings of the project, we met with them a couple of times on site to talk about it. Um, so um, I'd say let's talk to the circuit riders next week about it and then Perhaps we can, one of us would be willing to meet with them. I was just going to say that I'd be willing to, even before the circuit rider. Well, um, really, we've got two doors a, down from them, but I, you know, whatever you guys think. Yeah, I think that what we need, Pat, would be somebody who's, um, one of us who's um, really been on the project. Well, you've been in from the beginning, but really is to be in your position position as alternate, it would be more difficult to speak 
for the commission? No, the um, my mindset with it is not to necessarily speak to the commission. It's just to have a conversation, have some communication, not really give them any uh, um, decisions on anything, but just as like a you know inf informative meeting, just for me to get some uh, just information for the rest of us. Well, you I know, think, okay. um, I think that would be useful with the way that things have been going to stop, say hi. I am also their neighbor. Um, it, you know. also, it also might be possible that Dan um, as the sort of the contractor of our bunch might be, if, if he was willing to, might stop in. Uh, that would give a chance to really look at the construction of the porch. And see well, I've been there and looked at that already last fall, so. All right. Well, now that it's now that it's completed, uh, just it, I would say, think about, you know, it, it, Tim would be a good person to stop in as well. If, but Tim's, you know, t the problem is Tim is working uh, five days a week, <laughs> keeping the world safe. So. <laughs> Well, I was considering already doing it because I, I was interested to, ch you know, check out the store and see what they were doing. But um, like I said, I could see their house from here. So. Yeah. And myself and the circuit rider do it on Wednesday. Yes, you can. That's part. That's the plan. Would you could go up on Wednesday? All right. So we'll see what happens. Pat, you could drop in informally, but I would say not to speak about um, historic district business if you wanted to yeah. touch, touch base. But I would let us, Stan will go in with, I appreciate the offer. Uh, we appreciate the offer. I think Stan and the circuit rider can stop in. And yeah. uh, like I said, I was looking to introduce myself to him, you know, as a neighbor and as, you know, uh, on the commission or whatever, and, uh, and I haven't met him yet. Just an informal thing, not any decision making, anything like that, you know. Um, members, what do you think? Uh, do you have just casually stop, informally stop in and introduce yourself and let him, people know he's a you're a new member of the commission, and I think that's reasonable. Neighborly. Yep. It is neighborly. Okay. Yep. Appropriate. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. The more help we can get, the better. Uh, building bridges is what we need to do so that it's not an, we can, you know, that I think there's a perceived adversarial relationship that may not, may not have initially been there, but it, it's attempting to build itself. So we can nip that in the bud. That would be good. All right, Pat, thank you for the offer. No problem. I'll let you know if I uh, get any useful info. Okay. <laughs> um, Will the circuit writer have copies of all the things we approve for that property? I can. I will provide them with that. Yes. Yeah. Send the same to me. Refresh my memory. All right. I will do that. Um, all right. So where are I? Is old business still on? Um, and I think the other thing is I sent the Youngs the full, um, as full as I have listing, as detailed as I think we, we have at the moment, listing of what we need to be able to render a, a, a fair decision on their proposed project. Does anybody have any other old business? Yeah, I, I might fall under old business. Uh, maybe the last meeting or the one before with the issues Pat was raising with the church. I think you were going to look in to see um, they had plantings as a screening that have died and you were going to check on that and also whether they'd taken a permit out for that light. Have I you had a chance not, to do that, Gail? I could, not, I could not find anything in our minutes that, that spoke about the light. Um, but I did, did find in the minutes, and Tim may remember, that we approved the, the 
it was the Woodstock Academy proposal that approved the um, crossing the, lights. Yeah. It approved the crossing lights that never got installed. Right. And then <clears throat> we also approved a line of shrubbery, um, screening shrubbery on the north of the of the um, parking lot um, that was in that the the academy put in and those died over the first winter and have not been um, replanted. Well, did so, the approval stipulate that they maintain them? Yep. 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 All right, so need to send them a little uh, heads up. Yes. So when I get the um, stationery uh, at the beginning of the week, that will have to be a formal letter there to the academy that reminds them that um, they need to replace with spring coming is perfect time to replace the dead shrubbery. Um, I found out some info. Part of the reason why they died is because of the proximity of how close they were put to the uh, parking lot and that uh, snow banks were pushed into them from snow plowing. Mm -hmm. So that aided their uh, quickly demise. Yeah. Now, I remember some discussion about that, and there was followed by a guarantee that they would be replaced. Did it's anybody drive years, by? Right? Did anybody drive by at night to see the light? I have not done that yet, Pat. No. How is? Has it been quieter up there? Um, it has been. Uh, drive by. Check out the light, bring your sunglasses because it'll blind you. Uh, the, um, it has been a little quieter. There have been more calls to the state police. Um, I've been trying to talk to a sergeant with the barracks of being able to get a record of all the times the police were called. Um, I did run in at a fire department call to one of the state troopers that responded to a phone call. And he actually followed one of the vehicles home that had a uh, teenagers in it and uh, spoke to their father because they were freaking out that they had a trooper follow them home all the way and the uh, father assured them that they will never return. Um, the trooper informed them that it was trespassing. Um, so it's been a little quieter. Um, not perfect, but anything is better than what it was. No gunshots lately. Um, Still, I have not yet sent the uh, email to the church. Um, just continue a couple conversations with the first selectman. But, yep. The um, the light would be a matter of the of planning and zoning. So you just to make sure that would have to be approved. I would assume by planning and zoning. So you might check with Tina Lejoy on that. And who who was taking care of the uh, the night sky initiative? Who was working on that? That was the um, Last Green Valley. Okay. So I didn't know what kind of communication we had with them. And they're also there. That's part of the town ordinance as well. Um, new business. The only new business I have would be the, um, the presence of that um, travel trailer that's behind, hold on, I wrote it down. It's in the, in the woods behind um, 606 Route 169. That's the house south of Rondo's garage. Um, and but it's visible, it's not visible from 169, it's visible from Old Hall Road um, through between um, 49 and 37 Old Hall Road. And it has um, some, it looks like it's got decking and porch railing now around it. Um, Tim brought up the fact that, is that a, isn't that a zoning issue and I, more I think about it, I mean, I think that's the first place to go. If in fact, it looks like if anybody drove past and had a squint at it um, to see if it's, Being done, though. if it's something that's 
you know, it looks, it looks to be, looks like somebody parked their camper, their larger camper out in the back and now is using it as a, um, a, a little, I don't know, camp out there. They put, making it a little more permanent than just uh, the place to store it while you're not using it. I did drive I drove by, by um, this afternoon and you can see, you can only see the camper from 169 from Old Hall Road. Uh, you can see the platform. I will say that if, uh, regardless of the, the zoning stuff, as far as we go, I don't think that with, uh, you know, late spring, summer, fall growth, that you would be able to see it from the road once there are leaves on all the uh, undergrowth and the trees and everything. I guess, which is probably why it was more, it's more visible at this time of the year. Tim, you were saying? Yeah, I did drive by. I, I agree with Pat. It, it's barely visible now. So I think with spring and summer growth, you're barely going to see it. It struck me more as a seasonal kind of occupation of that area, but I'm not sure. And I think you're right. I think it is something for the planning and zoning officer to look at. Oh, I'm really not that concerned from a historic district perspective about that marring the overall character of the historic district where that is. Uh, yes, um, it's just a matter of it, in, of what we all thought, um, and I, I I I think that then it's just something that needs should be um, I think probably just pointed out to Tina LaJoy, um, and then. They, and it may it may have been it may be something where it's been approved. I don't know. I don't know the story about it. Right. right. Another thing, Gail. I think I had mentioned to you a couple months ago the property just to the north of Rondo's garage that applied after the fact for their siding and whatnot. They have down a blacktop driveway. Now, were they supposed to go before us for that or? Yeah, if they, if it wasn't blacktop and they have put in blacktop, then they, it needs to be approved. Yeah, when I drove in there, it's been a long time, but I don't think it was blacktop. Yeah, that looks new to me. So it's, Rondo's is 612. That's a duplex. It's like an apartment, uh, like a house that's converted into like a couple of apartments. No, I think it's. Oh, no, that's south of, the, of Rondo's. I think it's left of the Grange, if you look at it. <clears throat> yeah, it's between it Rondo's and the Grange. Yeah. 622. It's got kind of a. Uh, it's got a big dormer on the second floor. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Can't tell what it, by the picture, I can't tell what it had. So we need to. Seems right. like it has two driveways that are now black topped. One to the right of the house, one to the left. All right. Take a drive by when I'm up next week to pick up the letterhead, and that may need to have a, a letter. You may have to get a ream of that. Yeah. <laughs> get a pad. I, yeah. I just hope my printer works. I'm using it so infrequently, it tells me, sorry, I dried up and shriveled away. Um, and then the only other the question I had for us is um, has to do with a installed basketball hoop. Um, you know, if it was just if it's one that you just kind of roll out and it's weighted and it sits there on your driveway, that's that's just a temporary piece. But if one puts installs a basketball hoop um, on their driveway, what do we think about that? 
it concreted in or is it like screwed into the garage? No, it's into the, it's on a big post that's into the ground. Well, that's a permanent structure then. Yep. Well, that doesn't moved. look very historical. <laughs> right. Um, do, you, do we feel that that re needs an application? I do. Okay. Is that a yeah, consensus? I would, I would agree. Okay. Where it, I believe it is, is it the old mill on Route 171? Everybody know where that is? No, but 171's in the historic district? Yep. Yep, the historic district goes, goes along Old Hall Road and then it skips the way, it kind of, it angles down to, um, oh, where is it? It's the old, it's called the Wells House, 378 Route 171, and it's, it, it sits. It faces away from the road. Right, right. You see the end of the house. It looks like it's a long, almost a long two-story house, and all you see is is one end of it. And it used to be. It was. It's um, right along Sawmill Brook and 171, and it was a mill. Um, oh, yeah. And it changed hands recently, so the new owners appear to have installed the basketball hoop. Okay. Right. I know. I know that the real estate agent had contacted me during the sale and asked if wanted to know about being in a historic district and confirming that the house was in a historic district. So the real estate agent at least knew it was. But details like basketball hoops might slip their mind. So I will follow up on that. All right. Does anybody have any other new business? Just an FYI for everybody, in case you didn't know, the uh, old headmaster's house that is in between my house and the church um, has been on the market and has already been under contract for a couple of weeks now. And from my understanding of the previous tenant is in need of a lot of repair. And from my side, you can see but the outside is in need of a lot of repair. Um, just a heads up for the future. Thank you. Well, we should make sure that they're informed. Yeah, right. Let's if you hope have they a have a different real estate agent than the Lassards. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a chance, if you have a chance to meet them, Pat. Um, Sorry, say that again. If you if you have a chance to meet new owners, introduce yourself and um, send them. Go, go, you can go ahead and for, email them the, um, the, the uh, book because I doubt if Woodstock Academy has the historic district book. And that should, there should be one of those with every home in the district. So with, with how fast, I mean, the, the real estate market's been ridiculous. Uh, some houses don't even get, you know, uh, advertised and they're, you know, done in a week. Uh, I'm curious to see if this is somebody that's flipping it or who knows what, but um, the, uh, I think we should get signs made up. They just stick into the lawn right next to the real estate sign that says this house is in the historic district. <laughs> it's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> Did you know? Um, the only other thing I have to bring up is meeting dates and times. You know, we have been keeping with the Wednesday nights, nothing set in concrete, but now we've got two new members on the commission. So we just want to make sure to see if there are, if, if the time is generally good. I know Pat had mentioned something about might potentially squeezing it a little earlier. So we used to have them at 6.30 and then with Zoom meetings, they edged over to seven. With you, me, me too, because it matters. Right. Yeah, I'm good. Tim, you're off and working. So does which works better? Is seven or better for you than six thirty or either one? Either one's good. Okay. 
Pat, would it be helpful if we meet at 6.30? It would be more helpful. I would love it if we could do it at six. I have a two-year-old and a five-year-old. So I got one of them that, as you see, the pen stick up in front of my face often, coloring with me here, waiting to go to bed. And I got the other one already in bed. Um, seven o'clock, yeah, there you go, uh, <laughs> is generally our uh, start of our bedtime routine. So um, if it's possible to change it any earlier, it'd be, it would be helpful for me. But um, obviously, I'm not the only one. So well, let's try, let's go 6.30 for... For next, for eight, the eight, going forward, and I'll alert the town hall that we'll be meeting at six thirty, and try that one. And then, if if we think we can bring it any earlier, then we'll we'll go forward from there. But let's try six, at least six thirty. Go back to six thirty for next next month's meeting. Oh, well, we record Jeopardy, so I don't really care when we do it. <laughs> oh, Daddy. <laughs> All right. Anybody have anything else? Not me. No. Well, for our two new alternate members, now you've gotten your first meeting under your belt. So hopefully you will you will like to remain with us and we appreciate, <laughs> and we appreciate you coming on board. Here, here. Right. No problem. Looking for a motion to adjourn. So <laughs> who was that? <laughs> Everybody said they were ready. <laughs> All in favor, hand. raise your hand. Aye. Thank you. Meetings adjourned. Thank you very much. Have a good.